this part B, uh, we're going to talk about points of intersection, arc length, and tangent of polar curve. So let's talk about points of intersection first. Now, how do you find point of intersection, right? Um, part A, we actually find point of intersection, right? We set them equal and you solve those trick uh, equations. So suppose you try to find the point of intersection of this curve and this curve, and then you say, oh, how about we set them equal, right? So we're going to get, uh, what do we get? Set them equal, we get what? Cosine 2 theta equal to 1 half, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and then therefore, uh, 2 theta equal to what? Equal to what? Well, who was your trick teacher, right? I heard someone say we really like the trick teacher. <laughs> who was your trick teacher? Um, Patrick. Online. You don't remember his name? Oh, lucky here. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, what about Jasper? Who's your trick teacher? teacher? Yes. Mr. Wong. Mr. Wong? Yeah. What's the first name? Uh, I he, I took training in high school. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> okay. All he right. Didn't have a first name. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, right. Right. Ryan, who's your chick teach? High school too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Good one. Good one. Okay. Good. Then now I also took it in high school too. Okay. Uh, and then uh, high over two data equal cosine. Wait, I'm looking for two data, not data. Okay, oh. cosine of what equal to? Let's think about at the first quadrant. At the first quadrant, um, cosine of what equal to one half? Pi over three, right? So yeah, that's one of it. So the first quadrant, pi over three. Okay, um, cosine it is. Okay, let's think about cosine. Okay, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, right, for cosine. So, which means that if, if it's positive, so that means when x is positive, cosine is positive, right? x is positive at which two quadrants? Yeah, positive here and here. The x will be positive. And then negative at these two quadrants. So cosine will be positive at these two quadrants. So we focus on these two quadrants. So two data is power for three. And then at this quadrant, what would that be? Um, yeah, so you get here is pi over 3, right? And then over here, you also draw a reference angle here. Okay, and this is pi over 3. So you know that this is 5 pi over 3, right? So you will get pi over 3 and also 5 pi over 3, okay? Good. All right, at this, okay. Okay, you got this too. That's great. Okay, from this. The, they actually can continue because data could actually go from 0 to 2 pi, okay. Okay, but anyway, okay, suppose you get this too, okay. So how do you find data? If two data equal this, then data will be equal to, yeah, divide this by two, right? Divide this by two, you will get pi over six, and then five pi over six, right? Okay. Actually, you, you should get more though, this one. Because what, what do you know? Okay, we know that data is from zero to two pi, then what happened to two data? Two data is going to be from zero to what? Four pi, right? So over here, we only go from zero to two pi. We got this two for two data. We can continue. If I continue, there will be two pi plus pi over three. What would be this angle? What two pi plus pi over three? Two pi. 7 pi over 3, yes, 7 pi over 3, yes. Okay, one more, this one, adding 2 pi to it, what do you get? 
11 pi over 3. Yes, you got it. 11 pi over 3. Okay. Okay. So those are the, those are the value for two data. And then we just divide those by two to get data. So divide by two, divide by two, divide this by two, divide that by two, you got this, right? So you got this. Now, after you get those data, uh, you can get those points, right? Uh, how do you get those points? Well, you can put the data in first. Data is pi over six, five pi over six, seven pi over six, 11 pi over six. But how do you find out the R? How do you get the R if you know data? <laughs> yeah, you can put it in, but also over here, it satisfies both equation, right? So R is what? One half. So all of this will be one half. So R for all of them here will be one half. So one half, one half, one half, one half. Okay. Now let's look at the picture. Okay. That will correspond to what are the four points? The so four point pi over six, this one. And then um, pi pi over six, pi pi over six is this one. Seven pi over six, this one. Eleven pi over six, this one. You get this four. Okay. But looking at the picture, we don't just have four. We actually have more than that. We actually have also this one, this one, this one, and this one. Looks like I'm drawing flowers. Okay. You're missing those, right? So how come we're missing those? Okay. The reason over here is this R here could be positive one half, can also be negative one half. Okay, because if r equal negative one half, it's also going to be on the same circle. Remember, when r is negative, you just go opposite direction of ray. So, so r equal to one half, or r equal to negative one half, they end up to be the same circle. Okay, it's the same circle. The same circle over there. So you can actually replace that by negative one half. Okay. So R could be equal to one half or R equal to negative one half. So if you let R equal negative one half, then you're going to get all those, this four point over here. Okay. And then you will get all, all of them, all of them right here. Now some of you will say, wow, looks like if I do it, by hand like this, uh, sometimes I miss some of them, right? So and uh, here the suggestion here is it's better that you use uh, those uh, graphing device computer to do it. Do you know any uh, any app that you can graph this polar equation? What's the one that you use? Um, the one that you can use is one of them is Desmos. Okay, so you can use Desmo. It's an online graphing calculator. So you can use it to graph it. And then you make sure that you don't miss any one of those intersection points. Okay. All right. So that's one hint. Okay. Are you guys okay with this? Why the intersection? Okay. Okay. The next one here we're going to talk about is art lamp. Okay. So Oh, before that, let's re remind the formula. Okay. Do you guys remember for the art length formula, right? Art length is, art length L is the integral of the differential art length. For the ds over here, if y is a function of x, what does dx equal, uh, represent by? Do you guys remember that? If you put the dx outside, square root of what? One plus one plus dy dx squared. Everybody agree? Yes, I, I saw you guys nodding your head. Yeah, dy dx squared. Okay, the next one I want to ask someone to do this uh, without Ryan. Okay, <laughs> okay, so what will be this if x is a 
function of y, um, how do you represent this ds over here, the differential argument? Put the dy outside, what should I put inside? 1 plus ds for the dy is there. Yes, you got it, Nick. You did it, okay? You got it, okay? <laughs> All right. And then for parametric equations, back at that, uh, a couple, maybe two weeks, two or three weeks ago, we talked about parametric equation where x and y are function of a derivable t. At that time, we come up with a representation for the differential art land, and we put the dt outside here. Do you guys remember what do we put inside the square root? This time without Ryan or Nick, someone else. So the dx dt squared plus dy dt squared? Good job, Angela. Thank you. OK. Yes, that's the one. OK. So that's the so when you do the integral, you will just put integrating this is the integral of this differential art land. And at that time you can figure out a x go from what to what? Okay, a to b. And then here the t go from what to what? Okay, say a to b or alpha to beta. Okay. Now today we're talking about polar curve. R here is a function of data. So what will be this ds is? What would be that? Okay, so let's think about it. Uh, it turned out that it's going to be this. Okay, so the ds here in this case, this is the ds. Okay, That's the ds is going to be square root of r square plus parenthesis drd data square. Uh, it is a long story. How did they get this? Uh, you probably, are you, you guys want to know? You probably don't want to know, okay? It's in the book. Okay. <laughs> it's going to be really long, okay? Okay, so the ds is going to be this, okay? Remember that. So today we learn about a new representation for the differential art land. So, um, Go down over here, okay? ds equal to what? Mm -hmm. We just briefly go over. You see how many people have photographic memory? So what was it? ds equal to what? r square, uh-huh. Plus drd data square. Yes, you got it, okay? Now because r here is, um, r is going to be, R is the same as f of data, right? So you would just put this as f data square plus uh, f prime of data square. DRD data is just f prime of data, okay? Okay, good job, okay? So now you know different representation for the differential art land, right? Um, but you can put them together so then you can remember all of them at once, okay? To compare and do that. Okay. And maybe you can try to think about how is this one related to that one, okay? That will be a good question to think about, okay? Now we're gonna use this formula, okay? Uh, we try to determine the length of this uh, polar curve, R equal data. Data go from zero to one. Remember this is, the radian, okay? Radian data. Um, data go from radian one, radian zero to one, okay? Now this, this curve here is a little bit interesting. R equal to data. R equal to data looks very simple, right? In polar form, R equal to data. And it is actually a spiral. The curve of that is a spiral. For example, uh, when data equals zero, r is zero. When data is power four, r is power four. Data is pi, r is pi. Data is two pi, r is two pi. Okay, and then it's going to spiral out because as data increase, r also increase. So as r increase, it goes further and further away from the pole. So it's a spiral. We have spiral. Spiral has very interesting application, and also you see that in nature, right? Um, R equal data is a polar equation for a spiral like this. Okay. 
Now, what are we going to do? We're going to do, we're going to find out the odd length when data go from zero to one. Huh? Four pi? Uh, yeah, this one here is four pi. Okay. In this case over here, data here equal to zero is over here. And then end it over here, data equal to four pi. But we're not finding the, this odd length from zero to four pi. And instead, I'm looking for the odd length from zero, but then um, end up at one. Okay, this is a radian. Radian one, how how big, how large is the angle? Radian one. What is this uh this angle one, the radian. Pi over okay, think about pi over three. So this is about 3.14 over 3, right? Is this about 1, right? Is it about 1? So radian of 1 is about pi over 3. Okay, so think about this angle here. It's about pi over 3. So we know where is pi over 3. Pi over 3 is so it's about this. Okay, so the radian over here, it is. This angle here is one. Okay. This angle is radian one. Okay. So which is about pi over three. Think about that. Okay. So think about the angle. So what are we looking for? <laughs> we are looking for this. Uh, this is so small. It's so tiny right here. This. This part of the spiral. This part, the spiral when data go from zero to one, this part right here, the green one. Okay. When data go from zero to one, and how large, how long is this spiral? This part of the spiral. Okay. So I'm not looking from zero to four pi. I'm looking from zero to one. Okay. Let's try to set up the, set up the integral for the, at length right here. Okay. Again, uh, let's write down the formula here once. Okay. What was the formula? L equal to what? If we put the data outside, then what is this ds? What's the ds over here? Um, square root. What? Yes. Very good. So let me write it down. So that's the uh, ds. That's equal to integral square root. Here you put d data. And you just said that it is r square, right? Plus what? Yeah. dr d data square. Um, Okay, good job. Okay. Now you can think about the data change from what to what? Data change from what to what? Yeah, zero to one. Yes, you got it. Good job. Okay. So data change from zero to one. Okay, so zero here to one. So you set this up. So once you get this, the direction here right, the rest here is just follow. Okay. Okay, so you set this up. So that is the art lamp, okay? And R over here, what is R? R is what? R is the data. Yes, R equal data. Okay, what's the RD data? <laughs> yes, it is one. Yeah, D data, D data is one, right? Yeah, it is one, okay? So that is D data, D data, uh, which is equal to one. Yeah, you got it, it's one. So put together this one here will be will be this. You agree? Yeah. Data square plus one square, right? Okay. Looks kind of simple. Um, but how do we evaluate this integral without using calculator? What kind of integration method? Yeah, I use so. Checks up? Yeah, Gory said checks up. Yes. And how did you recognize you use checks up here? Because 
because uh, yeah, yeah, because it's this is this variable square plus a constant, right? Yeah, you got, and it's inside the square root. Okay, so remember last time we talked about when you have square root of x square plus a square, or square root of x square minus a square, or square root of I forgot. Oh, it's a square minus x square. Then you try to use a trick sub, right? So all this use trick sub. So that's what we're doing here. Okay. So right now the data here is kind of like the x. Okay. So we're going to use, I'll oh, make it too big. Please make it smaller. So this is this data over here. Okay. So we're going to use trick sub. Okay. So use trick sub. Good job. Okay. Good thinking. Now you can tell your next teacher. <laughs> I'm your teacher. <laughs> okay. All right. So now let's use trick sub. Okay. So data equal to what? When you use trick sub, data equal to what? Yeah. <laughs> Try it again. Tangent, yes, because one plus tangent squared equal to secant squared. Yes, tangent, right? So tangent x. Then what's the d, d data equal to? Huh? Secant, secant squared x. Don't forget what? dx, yes, yeah, dx. Yeah, dx. Okay, okay, good. Because differentiate, right? D data dx is second square x. So D data is second square x dx. So this is dx right here. Okay, now you're going to, when you do this kind of tricks up, what does this square root here become? What does that become? You, you do the tricks up, this one here, that become square root of the second square, right? Square root of second square. If it's square root of second square, that is going to become what? Yeah, it's going to become second x. And because it is positive, you don't need to, um, you don't need the absolute value there, right? Okay. So this one over here, we know that it's going to become second x. Okay. So that is going to be second x, right? Here. Okay. But then, okay, so I know that it's going to become second x. So that becomes second x. And d data over here become, what does it become? That become second square x dx. So what happened to second times second square? Second times second q, yes. So this one here will be second. Okay, so that will become second q x dx, but then we need to figure out the upper and lower limit, right? So data here change from 0 to 1. Now we want to find out x change from what to what, okay? Because we changed from data to x. So when data equal to 0, tangent data, uh, I'm sorry, tangent x will be equal to 0. What does x equal to? So, yes, you got it. It's equal to so. <laughs> and then when data is 1, tangent x equal 1, what does x equal to? Mm -hmm. Pi over 4. Yes, you got it. Okay. So after that, then you can just put it like this. So this part here is secant q, x, dx, and the x go from 0 to pi over 4. Now I'm going to give you guys more jolly bean if you can answer this. What's the anti duality of second cube? Uh, oh, that would be hard. Hey, I know someone who can answer. I, I have confidence in you. Do you guys remember anti duality of second cube? <laughs> Secant 
Né? Você quer escrever? Eu quero escrever para esse ciclo. Yeah, at that time you break it into second time, second square and do something, right? But what was the result? Oh. Huh? It has, it has LN. It has LN. <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, that's for you want to say something? <laughs> no. <laughs> I thought you raised your hand. <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, Next, we do the Anshi here. That is going to be, okay, I don't blame you. I don't remember either, okay? <laughs> okay, it turned out to be one half second time tangent plus L and this. I think we got this one time. We did that one time, okay? And um, we got it, I think, it's one of the homework exercise or example in class. Okay, so, so that was the anti derivative second Q, okay? After that, you would just substitute x to be zero, x to be power four into this. Okay. Okay. Maybe that will be good review for some trick. Okay. Some, now I'm going to see if you remember from your trick class. Okay. What is second of pi over four? Okay. Let's see who's the best trick student. <laughs> second of pi over four? You got this, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh huh. Yes, this is square too. I I remember because second is the reciprocal of cosine. Cosine power over four. What's what's cosine power over four? Cosine power over four is root two over two, which is the same as one over root two. Okay, so reciprocal of this. So you take the reciprocal, so that is root two. Okay, good job. Okay. Okay, the next one without Ryan. <laughs> uh, this one is easy. Tangent of power four. What tangent of power four? One. This is so boring. Everybody knows. Okay. Okay, good. Um okay, next one. Second of zero. What's second of zero? Uh, remember it's reciprocal for cosine. What's cosine of zero? One. We simply go one? One. Yes, one. Yeah, you got it. So after this, what do you think? Okay, can you guys work on paper and tell me what you get over here after, after you're substituting? Anyone? It's Ike. Ike, you got it? Okay. You still had the one half outside, right? One half. Square root of two, two plus ln. Yes, yes, you got it. Okay, good job. Okay, so that's the result. Okay, Ryan, you got the same answer. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. All right. Okay. So this is the art land. So today we learned a new formula for art land. Um, this is the, the new one. Okay. This is the new one that we learned today. Okay. Maybe I should highlight this. Okay. This is the one today. Okay. Okay. Now let's try to use that formula. Um, do another example. This time find the art land of this cardioid. Okay. Um, but the cardioid. Well, it doesn't say data go from what to what, okay? But we will figure this out, okay? When data equal to zero, r equal to this equal to zero. Oh, wait, when data equal to zero, r equal to two. Okay, let's substitute data to be zero, okay? Substitute this data over here to be zero. Okay, what's cosine of zero? One. So it's going to be two plus two, so that will be four, right? You got it, four. So r is equal to four. So over here, I see if I have if I have this. I think I have a picture here somewhere, but I'm going to draw the graph right here, okay? So you can see better. So the graph of this is going to like that, okay? So. Okay. And um, when data equals zero, 
R is equal to 4, so it's going to be over. I'm going to move this up. Okay, so it's going to be at this point right here. And it is going to be 4 units away. 4 units away from the pole right here. Okay, and then um, remember this is a cardioid. As the data increase, the R here is going to change. And how does it change? Well, it, it's like a cardioid. It's like a heart shape. Okay. <laughs> like a heart, okay? <laughs> Sorry. Okay, but you can picture. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Okay. No, it looks great. <laughs> okay. All right. So this is going to be like, uh, I actually practiced. Um, uh, and it <laughs> Okay, so it's like a heart shape, okay? And anyway, uh, it go like this. So go around this. We want to find this total art length right here. Uh, and it make a complete round when data go from zero to two pi. It finish one round, okay? So the cardio is traced out exactly once when data go from zero to two pi. So let's think about the formula here. Okay, let's write the formula for R then. What was the formula? Square root of, if you put the data outside, what should you put over here? R square, yeah. Yeah, R square plus the RD data, right? Yeah, so this one here is just the, the R, right? It's the same as the R. This is just the R. And this one here is the DRD data. Okay, all right. So um, now the R here is, we place R here by 2 plus cosine data. So we're going to have 2 plus cosine data squared plus, what's the RD data? If this R equals this, what's the RD data? Okay, let me try, um, make it bigger. So the, the word here of a constant is zero, and then you have a two here, the constant multiple two, so you have the two outside. Now you differentiate cosine data with respect to data, it is negative sine data, right? So therefore it is negative two sine data, right? Okay, so that should be negative two sine data, and then you square that, okay, good. Um, we just get the ingredient ready. So then we can prepare the next step. Okay, data here go from what to what? So to two pi, yes, you got it. So to two pi, okay. This one here, you put it right here. This. Okay. All right. Um, now all you have to do is just use the Perfect square formula, right? So can you guys use a perfect square formula to expand this? Looks like today we do a lot of algebra, perfect square, again and again. Okay, everyone, what's the perfect square of this? Four plus A cosine, cosine theta plus four cosine square data, good job, okay. And then plus the square of that one is four sine square data. And what do you notice about, what do you notice about this, this two together? Yeah, that it become one, right? Sine square plus cosine square at the same angle, that's equal one, okay? So that simplifies things a little bit. So that is going to become, this is 4, this is 4. So we got 8, 8 plus 8 cosine data. And then here from this to this, ah, there, there's a lot to algebra here, okay? Um, what do we do over this? Do you have a square root over here, right? So you have a square root over here. Would that be nice if you have a perfect square inside a square root? So then when you take square root, then you will get a, a quantity that, because square root of a perfect square, you get a whatever the quantity that you square with, right? So I'm trying to make the inside here a perfect square. 
And to make the inside here perfect square, I actually use this half angle formula, okay? Because one plus cosine theta times one half is the square of this, okay? Did I write it down on your note already, right? So I put it down right here. So by doing that, I was able to turn this into a perfect square, okay? Now, because data here go from 0 to 2 pi, uh, data over 2 will go from 0 to pi, and it will be, it'll be positive. It will be positive, okay? Cosine, so cosine data over 2 will be positive, okay? Positive data over 2, cosine data over 2 is positive, yeah. Data over 2 is going to go from 0 to pi over 2. So that is at the first quadrant. So that is going to be positive. Okay, good. Um, and then after that, you can just uh, find the antiderivative. What's the antiderivative cosine of data over 2? Sine, uh, let's try that. Okay, so you, you just said that it is sine of data over 2. But when you differentiate, you had to times one half. When you integrate, you had to multiply, multiply by, multiply by two, right? Multiply by two, so times two. Yeah. So this one here will be, so that will be this in here. Okay. And then you do the algebra. <laughs> Okay, can you guys finish this? What does this equal to? If this should be an integer. Now, some of you might have question about why I get from this step to this step. Why this one here is four and the here is suddenly become eight, right? But uh, it double. The reason is because this integral here from zero to two pi. So from zero to two pi is actually double the integral from zero to pi. Okay, because the sim symmetry of the pink and the green. So from 0 to 2 pi, that's equal to 2 times this integral cosine of theta over 2, d theta. Theta go from 0 to pi. Okay. 0 to pi. And therefore, when you have four times two, and that's how you got this eight over here. Four times two, and that's gonna make you the eight right here. Okay, what do you get at the end? Huh? What, what's, the, what's the in, it should be an integer. 16? Okay, good job. 16 is the answer over here. You can have more jelly bean at the end. Okay. Okay, the last topic, okay, before we wrap this up today. The last topic is the tangent to polar curve. Okay, it was covered uh, last section, but uh, we're going to revisit this here with one example. Okay, uh, I see if you can remember, right? So at that time, we talk about x is r cosine data. Y is R sine data for polar, when you express X into R and data, that be this, right? Then how do you find dy dx then? To find dy dx, then you first find dy d data. What's dy d data? What kind of, what kind of rule you use to find the, uh, the, the product rule? Yes, wow, you can remember. Good job. Okay. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> the product rule, the product rule says that dy d data is what? Differentiate this first. So that will be what? Dr d data. Yes. Remember, r here is not a constant. Okay. r is a function of data. So dr d data. And then times sine data. Okay. And then plus, plus, um, this time we're going to keep the first function. So we're going to keep the R. 
Okay. And then times the derivative of the second function, what's the derivative of sine data with respect to data? Cosine data, yes, you got it. Good job. Okay. So we're going to get cosine data. Okay. So that's dyd data. Okay. So, uh, so dyd data is equal to this. So another way to write this is r prime. Let me make it bigger. So this is r prime. Okay. r prime sine data plus r cosine data. That's the numerator, right? So what's dxd data here? Follow this. What's dxd data? dxd data is r prime, yes. Minus or plus? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus. Plus r times negative sign data. Okay, so because the negative sign there, so yeah, you got it. Good job. So this negative sign over here um, is going to change. So this one here will be r prime with this. Okay, so now you remember this is minus. This is r prime. Okay, now how do you locate horizontal tangent? Horizontal tangent is dy dx equal to what? dy dx equal to zero. So when will dy dx equal to zero? Looking at this quotient, when the numerator equal to zero and the denominator does not equal to zero, right? Okay. So so we're trying to find when the numerator equal to zero, which is dy d data equal to zero. And providing the dx d data does not equal zero. How do you find uh, how do you find vertical tangent then? When do you get? Yeah, when the denominator equal to zero and the numerator does not equal zero. Okay, so so when dx d data equal to zero and the numerator does not equal zero, dy d data does not equal zero. Okay. So that's how we find vertical tangent. When both of them are zero, then what do we do? Do you guys remember what we do? Lobby tau rule. Tau rule. Yes, yes. We try to use lobby tau rule to it. Okay. Okay. Let's try to look at this example. Wow, you guys remember everything. I'm very impressed. Okay. Now this one here, we're trying to find the point, uh, at the point at which the curve, this, this is the curve. But has a vertical and horizontal tangent. Okay. Now looking at the picture, guess the uh, what? Where are the horizontal tangent? Does it look like uh? Does it look like here? Right. Look like look like we have a horizontal tangent here. Is it here also? Um, I think that's it, right? What about vertical tangent? Is it here? Here and also here, right? Okay, like that. Now the way that we do this is we're going to use we're going to look at the numerator and denominator. Okay. This is so okay. So the numerator equal to zero. Okay, so when you simplify this, the numerator is this, the denominator is this. Okay, let's look at the numerator equal to zero. How can I set this equal to zero? When I set this equal to zero, okay. Looks like both this one and this one in cosine. This one is sine. I can replace this by one minus cosine square, okay? Uh, when I do that, uh, what does it become, the numerator? Cosine square minus minus cosine square. So how many cosine square we got? You get two cosine square, right? Yeah, two cosine square. And then adding one cosine data and then minus one over here. Uh, now I'm going to set that equal to zero. Okay, so that's the numerator. This numerator over here becomes this. And I'm going to set that equal to zero. Okay, that's the one. 
he could do something. Okay, how do you solve this? Does it remind you of the quadratic equation? Does it remind you of 2x squared? Okay, let's think about it. 2x squared plus x minus 1 equals 0, right? We know how to solve this. How do we solve this? You can do factoring, right? Okay. So you can do factoring. You can try this way. And let's do the Chinese way. The two here, I factor into two times one. The negative one, I will try uh, negative one times one. Okay. Try negative one times one. And then I cross multiply. Okay. So two times one is one. One times negative one is negative. Um, two times one is not one. <laughs> two times one is two. Okay. If you say that with confidence, people will think it's right. Okay. That's two. Okay. And then one times negative one is negative one. What's the sum of this two? Sum of this is positive one, which is the same coefficient over here. So you know you got the right combination. So you will read this as. Okay, so this is going to be horizontally. So this is going to be uh, 2x minus 1. The second one here is x plus 1. Okay, so 2x minus 1, x plus 1. So 2x mi minus 1 equal to 0, what does x equal to? x equal to... <laughs> <laughs> He know the answer over here. <laughs> he said it's one half. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's one half. He, he's dreaming. He's dreaming. He, sometimes he, he, he dream and, uh, about a lot of things. <laughs> oh, about math also. <laughs> okay. So it's one half. So cosine theta will be equal to one half. Okay. And then from here, x equal to what? Uh, this one. Negative one. Negative one. Right. So negative one also. So cosine theta either equal to one half or negative one. Okay. Now you don't need to use the quadratic formula. Okay. You can just do the factoring. Okay. For all those people who took trick before, now is the time to prove that your teacher. <laughs> okay. All right. Cosine theta equal to negative one. Uh, what does theta equal to? Hi. Yes. Good job. Okay. I thank your high school student, uh, teacher for this. Okay. It's pi. And then, um, uh, cosine theta equal to one half. What does theta equal to? Power three. Power three. And also, um, it could be also at the four quadrant. So it could be negative power three, right? Yeah. Negative power three. So plus or minus power three. Okay. So basically, if you're looking at the picture, so when data is pi, looks like it's this one. Okay, let's, uh, I'm going to put a red dot over here. This is when data equal to pi. Okay. And then data equal plus or minus pi over three. Where is it? Oh, it's right here. It's this one. This. Then data equal to pi over three. And this one here is when data equal to negative pi over three. This too. Okay. All right. Now, <clears throat> when data equal to power three and negative power three, the denominator would not equal to zero. Okay. We, we tried it already. Okay. So trust me. Um, <laughs> you know, when we were in graduate school, sometimes we prove it. So it's obviously <laughs> this. <laughs> trust me here. Okay. Or by hand waving. Okay. Okay. So that's equal to. So this two is going to work. So this two gives you horizontal tension. Okay, so that works. The problem is this one. Do you think this is going to give you horizontal tension? Uh, this one doesn't. Okay, uh, why not? So it turned out that um, 
um, if you use lobby tiles rule or et cetera, then you can prove that it's actually not a horizontal tangent. Okay, right here. Okay, uh, I, I say an easy way to see that here uh, is say if this is a cusp, as it doesn't have a tangent like there. Okay, but I promise I won't put something like this that the numerator and denominator both equal to zero in the example or anything. But so you don't have to worry too much about that. But but here's a picture of it, and here's how we do with this. Okay, so today you guys actually did a lot. Boy, a lot of trick, isn't it, in calculus? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'd like to thank you guys for coming, and that's all for today. And that's the end of chapter 10. Um, there should be a test coming, okay? I'll let you know. <laughs>